grandchildren. This week, we're gonna go back to our animal safari lessons through the Bible. And this week, our animal is gonna be about a rhinoceros. A rhinoceros has great big horns to take down its competitors. The Israelites used a different kind of horn to bring down the walls of Jericho. Our story this week is coming from Joshua 6, 1 through 25, the fall of Jericho. Listen to our skit and then a word from Mr. Cam. We love you and we miss you. Bye-bye. This is all Barbara's rentals. You need a bobcat for the day? Yes, sir, we have bobcats. 8 a.m. tomorrow? What's the name? Okay, so we'll have one waiting for you tomorrow. Thank you. Welcome to Dixie's All Purpose Rentals. You got a job? We got the tool. Hi, I need to do a little demolition work. You want to wreck something? Yeah, I was on Walmart property I need to take down. Do you have a bobcat or tractor I can use? Ma'am, if you want to knock down a wall, you don't need a bobcat. I don't. Need a rhino. A rhino? I never heard of a rhino. You never heard of a rhino? No, who makes rhinos? John Deere, Caterpillar? Ma'am, I'm no zoologist, but I believe rhinos are made by mommy and daddy rhino. A mommy and daddy, wait, you mean a real rhino? Like the animal? That's right, ma'am, a rhinoceros. I didn't even know I could rent a rhinoceros. You can for only $19.95 per hour. And it'll demolish my wall? Ma'am, the rhino is equipped with power forms, perfect for doing demolition work. It'll take out your wall, believe me. So how does it work? Excellent question, ma'am. Simply back the tray up with a rhino to your site, attach a few photos to the wall you want to demolish, let them go. That's it? That's it. The rhino will attack anything that looks like a rhino, so don't let anyone around him with an extremely large nose or gray clothing. <laughs> You're a wise woman. Come on, let's go pick out your rhino. I can't believe you actually went live rant rhinos. You think you're surprised? You see the faces of people when we tell them we went live bobcats. Hey everybody, glad y'all could be here again this week for the message and for the skit and everything. Um, you know, the skit today uh, was about these people or this person that was going to rent a piece of equipment to tear something down. And the company that was renting it to them said, well, we can rent you a rhino. And the person didn't realize they were talking about a real live rhinoceros. And um, so they rented them the rhinoceros to take home to tear something down. And you know, the reason that they rented the rhinoceros is because, you know, rhinoceroses or rhinoceri, I don't know what plural for rhinoceros is, but anyway, they are known to, to be very big. They can be up to 15 feet long and weigh 7,000 pounds. And they have very tough hide. And they also have these huge horns on their head that they use for, for ramming things. And in the story today, we're gonna to talk about a different kind of horn that the Israelites used. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. And it comes out of Joshua chapter six, starting in verse one and goes to verse 20. This is what it says. It says, now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out or in. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priest blowing the horns. When you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. So Joshua called together the priests and said, Take up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and assign seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. Then he gave orders to the people, March around the town, and the armed men will lead the way in front of the Ark of the Lord. After Joshua spoke to the people, the seven priests with the ram's horns started marching in the presence of the Lord, blowing the horns as they marched and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed behind them. 
Some of the armed men marched in front of the priest with the horns and some behind the ark with the priest continually blowing the horns. Do not shout, do not even talk, Joshua commanded. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout, then shout. So the ark of the Lord was carried around the town once that day, and then everyone returned to spend the night in the camp. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priest again carried the ark of the Lord. The seven priests with the ram's horns marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. Again, the armed men marched both in front of the priest with the horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time, the priests were blowing their horns. On the second day, they again marched around the town once and returned to the camp. They followed this pattern for six days. On the seventh day, the Israelites got up at dawn and marched around the town as they had done before. But this time, they went around the town seven times. The seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you this town. Jericho and everything in it must be completely destroyed as an offering to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and the others in her house will be spared, for she protected our spies. Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction, or you yourselves will be completely destroyed, and you will bring trouble on the camp of Israel. Everything made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron is sacred to the Lord and must be brought into his treasury. When the people heard the sound of the ram's horns, they shouted as loud as they could. Suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed and the Israelites charged straight into town and captured it. They completely destroyed everything in it with their swords, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, goats, and donkeys. Now look, in the story, you know, they were told how to, how they were going to conquer Jericho and how, you know, how they were going to make the, the walls collapse. Now one thing about this story is that if it would have been anybody else's idea, if it would have been, you know, the people of Israel, Israel came up with this idea, it wouldn't have worked. The only reason that marching around the city and shouting and, and all the other things that they did worked is because God made it work, okay? And that so, so, you know, really the people of Israel were just being obedient to what, what God had told them to do. And so when you, when you look at your, your own life, you know, there's going to be a lot of things in your life that are going to be too hard for you to handle. Um, you know, it could be some type of sin in your life, uh, you know, something that you're doing, just being disobedient to God and you just can't seem to, to stop. It could just be a bad attitude or, or, or whatever it is. Um, and so you have to pray and you have to read your Bible and you have to seek out good counsel from other Christians and everything. And through all of that, if God tells you to do something, you know, just do it. And, and just leave the, the, the battle to Him. Let, let Him be the one that, just like in the story, you know, God is the one that made the walls collapse. Let God work on that sin in your life. Um, or, or just any other kind of struggle in your life. It may not even be something that you have control over. It could just be, you know, something bad going on in your family or, or just, you know, somebody, um, you know, somebody that you care about could be in the hospital or, or just something that's really causing you a lot, of, a lot of struggle in your life. Listen to God and do what He says to do and just trust that He's going to take care of it. Because a lot of the time, you can't fix the problem. All you can do is be obedient and trust that God can take care of it. Um, you know, like I said, in, in this story, um, there's no way that though them blowing horns and screaming would have made the walls collapse if God didn't, call, didn't cause it to happen. So just remember that, that, that God can fight your battles for you. All you can do is just be the people that He wants you to be and do the things that He tells you to do and trust that he's gonna help you either, he's either gonna take care of the situation and get rid of it, or he's gonna give you the strength to go through the situation. So anyway, that's all I got again this week. 
Uh, once again, if you have a question for me or Miss Nita or, you know, just, just call us and let us know. And hopefully someday soon um, all this will be over with. We miss all y'all very much and hopefully we can all get back together at church again one day. But until then, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.